And we are coming to our last presentation. So uh, I don't know if Mo is already. Hey, Tom. Sorry, we're going a bit over on the previous session. So. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yeah. And see me. No, yes. Can you see me? Um, All right, cool. Yes, yes we you can see, see the it. screen. Yes, yes. perfect. Uh, That's cool. We ask you to, yes, to be really brief with the presentation because uh, we are. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, uh, my name is Thank Mo. You. Yes. Uh, can I keep? Yeah. My name is Mo Sarwat. I'm uh, uh, associate professor of computer science at Arizona State University. I'm also a founder of Whereabots. So, without further further ado, let me just uh, tell you just a little bit about Whereabots. So, uh, Whereabots, like in our vision, is to enable every organization to be geospatial driven. And our mission is to democratize geospatial analytics by becoming the OS standard for scalable geospatial infrastructure. As you see on the right hand side, we use that using our open source software, uh, Apache Sedona, which is again, uh, software for uh, open source software for processing geospatial data at scale in modern data infrastructure. Uh, again, this is the wrong forum to motivate geospatial data, so I'm not gonna talk much about that. But the idea here is that uh, geospatial data is not a specific data type. Uh, geospatial data, any kind of data can be related to space and time, and hence geospatial analytics apply to uh, any kind of sp uh, data type. Uh, the geospatial data market is to reach $300 billion, which is actually huge by uh, 2030, and we have a lot of opportunity here. There are so many use cases beyond the traditional use cases from the past. Uh, so many tech companies, so many transportation companies, and uh, the government sector also is really interested in geospatial data and is already doing geospatial analytics. The main theme we've seen with uh, users is that they do a lot of extract, transform, load operations on big geospatial data. Uh, they run a lot of geospatial operations like spatial joint. So the geospatial pipeline is a complex pipeline deployed on the cloud or on premise, but in a cluster setting for scalability. So to show here in the stack, if you look at the stack here, can you still see us? If you look at the stack from the left hand side, you have the geospatial data, the very right hand side, this is the, these are the data usage applications and there are so many of the beloved applications we have or the tools we have like Esri, Carto on the end, Tableau, and also the consumer maps. There are so many formats for geospatial data uh, GeoParquet, for example, is one of them, but there are so many other formats that exist out there. And they, this data needs to be applied ETL on it, and you, uh, you need then store the data, and then you run some, again, sorry about that. Every time I move something around the screen, it moves. So, and then you do data processing for analysis. So, uh, so Apache Sedona exists actually in these three layers, the ETL, the data storage, and the data processing and analysis, and it makes these tools geospatial aware and makes them work with geospatial data. So to summarize, the benefits of uh, Apache Sedona is that an open source for us, uh, software for processing geospatial data at scale. Uh, you get usability, so it's a turnkey uh, geospatial data API using the standard spatial language, like again, the OGC standard, uh, it's GTS compatible, GeoTools compatible, and also Geo Pandas friendly if using Python. It's also uh, it adaptability, so it adapts to your stack, whether you use Spark, you use Flink in your data stack, you use Python, Scala, SQL, it will work. Uh, also integrability, so it's natural cloud integrability because again, uh, it uses SQL, so and this is most uh, Databricks and Snowflake, AWS, Azure, and most of cloud service provider use that. And it also uses the traditional geospatial formats, like again, from Parquet and other formats as well that the cloud is uh, familiar with. But most importantly, it's also chief scalability, so it's fast and efficient processing, so 100x faster than geospatial tools, and 10x faster than big data system implementation. I'm talking like about for Spark, for example, and 50% better use source utilization. So if you're using, if you're doing this in the cloud, it will save you a lot in the cloud. Uh, uh, for this present, for the sake of this, uh, for this presentation, so we heard about GeoParquet and the effort, and we actually support that because this uh, feeds into uh, our vision as well. So what we did is that the first thing we started, we said like, we wanna have a prototype of how can we load data uh, into Parquet. So we have, we, as of now, we actually implemented a function that can load the Geo Parquet format as it is right now uh, into Sedona and then Sedona spatial data frame. You can run SQL, you can run Python. This is just an example of the code. We also implemented like a SQL function like we, uh, it's not in the standard, but potentially it will be the standard in the future. It's called ST uh, jump from uh, GeoPark and ST load from GeoPark. You can load that into also a spatial data frame and run SQL on top of this. 
uh, and we also implemented like uh, the right format so you can actually process things in Sedona and do your analysis, build a new uh, data frame, and then write things back into the GFRK format. So in other words, we were trying to support this effort. We were trying to be able to load things, write it back, uh, especially for people, for users who are already using Sedona. So this is our effort when it comes to GFRK. I tried to make this brief because of the, for the sake of time, but I'm happy to take any questions. Uh, you did. Thank you very much, Moa. And I think we can uh, continue the discussion on Gitter. Um, I, I will thank Absolutely. all the I, I will thank all the speakers here for an excellent session. Really, really interesting talks. Um,